Welcome back. Um, this is the second part of my spell candle series. If you did not see the first part on how to dress your spell candle, you might want to start there. Otherwise, let's just jump in. So your spell candle is prepared. It is ready to go. What now? First things first, you'll need some sort of candle holder or surface to burn it on. You can buy candle holders. You can make candle holders out of clay, or if you don't have any of those things, you can melt wax off of the bottom of it and stick it onto some sort of fire safe plate or dish or tray, whatever it is that you have. So set it up wherever it is that you will be performing your spell candle spell, whether that's on your altar or in your living room on your floor, make sure that it has plenty of space to not catch your stuff on fire. Then you will uh, do your normal space cleansing or circle casting or whatever uh, usual spell ritual that you have, um, you will do that. Um, if you like to cast circles, um, that is a great way to protect yourself, protect your area. You may choose at this point to do a grounding and a centering, um, just become more present, become more in the moment and focus on your intention. What is it that you want from this candle? What is it that you're putting out into the universe? What is your spell's intent? Once you're in the proper state of being, you will light your candle. So as your candle burns, you want to continue to meditate on what it is that you want. And you might even consider different ways that it could manifest. So you always want to be specific, but not too specific. Uh, one example that I like is if you want to draw in love, if you're looking for romance, you might want to specifically say romance and not just love, because if you say love, then you might just like get a phone call from your mother who's just worried about you. That's a form of love. So you want to ask specifically for a romantic love, a positive romantic love, but you don't want to say, I want it specifically with this person and this is what I want from it and this is how I want it to happen, like in a movie that's playing in your head. You can't have that as an option, but always be open to things happening differently. And as you are doing this, um, after you have meditated for a while, you've thought about your intention, you can read the candle flame. The candle will tell you how your spell is going. So you will want to focus on the flame of your candle. A normal steady flame means that it's everything's going as planned. Uh, your spell has been heard, your intention is heard, and everything's going normally. If you have a super tall, steady, like strong flame, like it's, I don't mean just kind of taller than usual, if it's super ridiculously tall and strong and powerful, there's a lot of energy behind the spell and it might manifest very, very quickly for you. If your candle flame is super short, um, not like flickering about to go out, but just like it's strong, but it's like tiny. The message is that there, it might take a little bit more time to manifest. It might be a slow spell. So anticipate that you will need to be patient. If your candle flame is super weak like it is like hardly there it's it's like not not even a thing now might not be the time for that spell or there might be obstacles that you have to hurdle over before that spell will manifest so black smoke could mean one of two things it could mean that your candle wick has gotten too long and is emitting soot it also could mean that uh, there's bad luck negative energy or some kind of conflict uh, getting in the way of your spell. White smoke, on the other hand, is good luck. So if your candle is emitting uh, white smoke, that's a good sign, that's a positive thing. If your candle flame is super crazy and dancing around and there's nothing to explain it, like wind or fans, <laughs> um, uh, open doors, there's a high energy behind the spell, but it might have unexpected results or obstacles to dance around. A flickering candle flame could mean that there are spirits or some kind of outside energy that is here to help guide your spell. So it could be a great thing that um, your candle flame is kind of flickering. It's kind of like it's talking to you. Speaking of it talking to you, if your candle flame starts popping or crackling, that means that something is trying to talk to you. Something is trying to speak to you through the candle flame, through the pop. It's like chattering. It's really important that you listen. 
you need to just sit and meditate with your candle. They might be telling you, hey, uh, we hear you, we want to help you, but something is not quite on the track that it should be. So you might want to consider your spell, consider what it is that you want from it, and just kind of sit and listen to uh, the popping or crackling flame and listen to yourself, listen to yourself internally. You can continue to consider different ways that it might manifest after your spell is done. So if you don't have an epiphany or an aha moment while you're there sitting with the crackling flame, that's okay. If your candle goes out, won't light, or uh, if you have like a jar candle and your jar candle breaks, now is not the time for that spell. That is the universe saying, hey, now's not the time. So um, stop the spell at that point and reconsider um, what it is that you were after. Maybe it's just not the right time for it, or maybe it's not the right type of spell. So consider modifying it or reflecting on it for a while. Ideally with these little spell candles, you will want to sit with it and uh, focus on your intention and meditate with it until it burns out entirely. I don't always have time for that. So sometimes I will split it up into two days, um, maybe even three days, and just revisit the same spell over and over again. Once your spell candle is complete, uh, your spell is complete. So yeah, say thank you, um, close your circle, and you're done. We did it. I also would like to always put in a disclaimer that every witch has their own way. So my interpretation of candle flame reading or spell candle dressing might be completely different from a different witch. That doesn't mean that either of us are wrong, it just means that we're doing it differently and that's totally okay. Hey guys, editing room Christy here. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this little mini series. I really enjoyed making it. I love making these videos. Um, I just wanted to pop on here uh, to tell you guys that I've loved making these, but it does take a lot of time and energy and caffeine for me to be able to make these. So if you would like, I made grimoire pages. Let me scoot over. Uh, they are about the topics that I just covered, dressing a spell candle and uh, candle flame meanings, and they're $1.50 on my shop. So if you would like to get some cool grimoire pages to either hang in your room next to your altar, next to wherever, or to put in your grimoire or book of, book of shadows, whatever you have, um, or if you just want to help support me and help keep me caffeinated while I make these videos, it is only $1.50 for both pages on my shop. I'll put the link in the description or you can go to christywitch.com and then click on shop. If you can't buy the grimoire pages but you still want to help support, um, just liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos is an awesome way. Or just commenting and saying, hey, I really appreciate it. It helps keep me motivated and it helps keep giving me the motivation to caffeinate myself to make these videos. So, all right, back to original me. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more spell videos in the future, let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.